Hi, I'm Mimi Gibson. I was a kid actor from the time I was two until I was 20. And then decades later, I went back into the Young Performers Committee of Screen Actors Guild, and we changed the laws in the state of California for the kid actors coming up. Uh, my career was, I was to get every job I went on an interview for. That was my job. My job was to get a job, then learn my lines, and do my work, be a good girl, do what was asked of me, and get the next job. That's what I did. And I did 34 movies. I did over 200 TV shows. I did lots of voiceover work. I did calendars. I was the number one calendar girl. Those were the days of kids and animals for six years. And, and tell me about some of your more interesting um, film experiences. Oh, let me see. Well, a really hilarious monster movie. The monster that challenged the world. Oh, it is hilarious. So that was really good. And the houseboat with Cary Grant and Sophia Lauren. And uh, I did the Egyptian that was with Victor Mature and Yul Brynner. I worked with Yul Brynner also on The Buccaneer. Um, and I did uh, Lucky, The Voice on 101 Dalmatians. And in uh, Three Faces of Eve, I played the character Eve as a little girl. Yeah, I'm getting myself confused. I'm <laughs> old. <laughs> oh, some of the downsides. Seeing another little actress get slapped across the face because she wasn't s crying hard enough and her mother was watching and uh, she was slapped by uh, an old actress and nobody said anything. And that was very shocking and appalling. And, uh, but parents know that if they say anything, then their kids don't work anymore. So that was, that was the most shocking thing that happened. So I am shocked and appalled that the Me Too movement has nothing for children. They don't have any people that speak for children. I am sorry uh, that things have happened to adult women and, and it's horrible and unfortunate. But children are our innocence. They don't have any frame of reference and they don't have many places that they can go if they need protection. And sorry to say, a lot of times they can't go to their parents. It's a sad situation. We need to address it. We talk about all these things. And children are low on the totem pole. It's beyond belief. The, the thing that we should protect the most, we do not. And I hope that we will address that. I was in Northern California watching television and Paul Peterson that was in a houseboat with me came on and said that he had started a minor consideration and it was for ex-kid actors who were having trouble making it in the real world and uh, get them clean and sober and uh, help them in any way he could. So I called him up, I hadn't talked to him in decades I hadn't been around to anybody in the business in decades. And he said, oh my God, 
where have you been? And I said, living my life. <laughs> he said, well, we're going back into the union and we're going to change the laws for kid actors. And I said, I'm with you. I'll be right there. So once, once every month, we had a Young Performers Committee meeting and there were a, a core group of us old has-beens and uh, we came and uh, at first everybody told us to go away <laughs> and but we hung in there for eight years and we got laws changed in the state of California that helped the kids save their money 15% day one dollar one and get the schools reimbursed for when kids were absent. And that to me, I liked my career, uh, sort of, but it wasn't anything I really wanted to do. And, but if I hadn't had that career, then being able to change the laws made that happen. And I'm very, very proud of the work we did. Experience. The Coogan Law was set up to protect children. Jackie Coogan, uh, he was Uncle Fester in the Adams family. When he was a little boy, he was just beautiful. And he did all kinds of silent films. He was very, very popular. And um, he earned millions of dollars. And his family spent it as fast as he made it. And so when he grew up, he had no money and he sued his parents and he got whatever pittance he could get from them like Gary Coleman did uh, and uh, so the studios realized that there was a problem and during those days everybody was under contract to a certain studio and so when they wrote the law it was anyone who was under contract was covered by the Coogan Law. But by the 50s, uh, people were not under contract. Most actors, any kind of actors, were not under contract. So the Coogan Law needed to be changed because of all of the funds of the children being misappropriated. And children are the chattel of their parents in the state of California. And all of the contracts done in California are the law of the land in the motion picture industry because most contracts are under California law. And so when we all went back into the union, we wanted to change that so that day one dollar one the children's money would be saved and it does cost a lot to be a kid actor you have to have headshots you have to have clothes that look a certain way sometimes you take lessons there's and acting lessons and you know horseback riding ballet tap whatever and so it's expensive. So the Coogan Law covered 10%, we covered 15%. 15% day one, dollar one, put into a locked account, not accessible, except if you have any kind of a medical emergency. Um, it's locked up and you can't touch it until you're 18. And so that's a way for kids to have funds after they've reached the age of majority in California, which is 18. The film section, see if anything catches your eye. Oh, John Wayne. Okay, so worked with John Wayne, Wings yeah. of Eagles. Wow. I played his daughter. Evelyn Rudy was also his daughter. We had a great time working with him. He uh, and Maureen O'Hara were on this movie and they had worked 
together so many times, and John Ford directed the movie. So these people were all old pals, so it was a very easy shoot. And he was very nice and just very easy, easygoing, had a nice nature to him, laughed a lot. It was great. Okay, I worked with Audrey Hepburn on uh, The Children's Hour. She was truly like a princess. She was beautiful, sweet, kind, graceful, and in between shots, she would do pirouettes across the stage. She was just lovely. She was friendly to everybody. She was delivered to the set by limousine, and they came and picked her up and took her away in the limousine, and she'd wave to us like she was a princess, and we all waved back. It was wonderful. Loved her. Where was that filmed at? Uh, Goldwyn. Oh. We had Elvis on one side. We had the Rat Pack on the other side on the two different sets. At the same time, same day. At the same time, and this was over weeks. Mm -hmm. And the Rat Pack's dressing rooms were next to ours, and our shoot was the children's hour. It was about 10 of us kids, and we were in these dressing rooms right next to Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and the mothers were just so upset. They didn't want the Rat Pack to be next to us uh, like we looked, like anything they'd be interested in. Mm. Not. <laughs> and Elvis would come late with two white um, convertible cars and he was always chauffeured by some guy with, and a bunch of guys, it was a bunch of guys, all of his friends from the service. This was uh, uh, Follow That Dream. This was the shoot he was doing. And um, he was, I think, the most handsome man I've ever met. He was beautiful. Oh, you met him? Yep. Yeah, we all walked over to his set. And he was nice. Do okay. you get asked often if you ever cross paths with Shirley Temple? Or did you ever cross paths with Shirley Temple? I talked to her on the phone once. Really? <laughs> yeah. Um, we had invited her to, we had a big conference with a bunch of old kid actors, new kid actors, at Universal City, and we had invited her. And uh, she lived up by me in Northern California, and she just called to say that she couldn't make it, but she thanked us very much for inviting her. Mm. <laughs> so the name of my book is Working Kid, and it's about all the work I did. I tried to remember Everything I did, do you know how hard that is? I'm 70 for crying out loud. To go back that far, it's, the memories are fleeting. So I did my best. Most of the movies I remembered. A lot of the TV, I, I didn't. And I saw a TV show the other day and I didn't remember one bit of it. But it was pretty odd. <laughs> It was an odd TV show. <laughs> and so um, so I tried to put in all my memories of those things, the people I worked with, the experiences I had. And then I then jumped ahead to going back into the union in the early 90s uh, with all the other people all the different characters, all the things we saw, all the things we experienced, and fighting for kids' rights. We all became young performer activists, and that's what we were, and that's what we did, and I'm very proud of all of us. We, we did it, 
and we got the laws changed in the year 2000. So yippee for us, yippee. <laughs> Gosh, okay, I wanna try asking like one more question. Um, okay, um, what advice would you give a child actor today? Oh, my advice would be, if you wanna be in the business, you do it. And just know your lines, realize that they're going to expect you to be an adult, act like an adult, can't mess around, you have to be there to do the work. It's work, it's not fun, it's not like they're going to entertain you and make it fun for you, they won't. But if you want the work, if you want to do the work, you go do it and fight for it. And, and if your parents will take you and, and that's something that you really, really want to do, do it. And sometimes the director compliments you in front of everyone. Mm -hmm. And that's worth its weight in gold. It makes you proud of yourself. It makes you feel good. Like you did like what you, you came here to do. Yep, you did the job. Wow. Yeah.